um, as a yeah as a ratio. Okay, but let's take a look at the sine. So that's opposite over hypotenuse. So say we're looking just at the 30 degree triangle right now. We have opposite over hypotenuse. What is the hypotenuse always going to be? One. One. So if we have y over r, do I really need to put that r? No. no. We can just say that sine is our y value. So for sine 30, we have a half. That's our y. Okay, what's sine cosine, or sorry, cosine of 30 degrees? Okay, adjacent over hypotenuse. Our hypotenuse is 1, so what, do I need to write x over r or just x? Mm -hmm. Just x, because we're dividing by 1. So the x value on cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. So as an exact value, we have root 3 over 2 for cosine 30. <coughs> Tangent, what sides are we looking at? Opposite over adjacent. Okay, opposite over adjacent. So we have y over x. So I'm just going to do that on the slide here. So my y is a half. <coughs> I'm dividing by my x, root 3 over 2. So I have a fraction divided by a fraction. I'm going to go through this the long way and then I'm going to show you a shortcut. Okay? So in order to get rid of the denominator, I have to multiply by the reciprocal. 2 over root 3, and whatever I do in the denominator, I also have to do in the numerator. Multiply by 2 over root 3. These just cancel out, so there's no point even writing that. Hey, what's going to happen to these 2's? Cancel out, and I'm left with 1 over root 3. Now let's look at a shortcut. 1 over 2 divided by root 3 over 2. What happened to the 2's? Okay, they're both in the denominator. They cancelled out. So if they're the same, they cancel out. We're left with 1 over root 3. Now the last thing I'm going to mention is now that we have 1 over root 3, we have to rationalize. So multiply by root 3 over root 3, and we end up with root 3 over 3. Okay, so our 10 is root 3 over 3. Tan's just a little bit more tricky. You have to simplify things. Jackson, do you have a question? Why did I do this? So we aren't allowed a radical in the denominator, so we have to rationalize. And we multiply by the radical itself to get rid of it. Root 3 times root 3 is the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is just 3. Okay, um, I want you guys to calculate something for me. First of all, if we're using a degree measure, we need to be in degree mode. So let's go mode, degree, enter. And then I want you guys to put sine 30 degrees and see what you get. Sine 30 degrees. Make sure you're in degree mode. Do you get 0 0.5? Good. Now what about if you go coast 30 degrees? You get a decimal, 0 0.866025 something, yep. some something. Okay, now, great, that is the ratio, but it's a decimal. So what if I asked you for an exact value? Then you would have to use this special triangle. Okay, so if I ask you to find the ratio of cosine 30, and I don't specify that it has to be exact, you can just put in cos 30 and call it a day. But if I say I want the exact value of cosine 30, you have to then use the special triangle or the unit circle, which we're going to get to later. Okay? Let's move on to 45 degrees. Okay, so first we're going to figure out what is sine 45 degrees. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, but my hypotenuse is 1, so I don't worry about it. It's just going to be that y. So I have root 2 over 2. Okay, what's cosine 45 degrees? It's the x coordinate, root 2 over 2. And your tangent is your opposite over your adjacent. So root 2 over 2 divided by itself is 1. Okay, and 
lastly, we have 60 degrees. What is sine 60 degrees? What's your y, y over your r? Good. Group 3 over 2. Okay, what's your x value? One half. One half. So that's your cosine. Help you. <laughs> Okay, so cosine, that would actually be adjacent over our hypotenuse, but our hypotenuse is 1, so we just need the x, 1 half. Okay, and lastly, tan, that's going to be our y over our x, or opposite over adjacent. So we have root 3 over 2 over 1 over 2. What's going to happen to those twos? And we're left with root 3 over 1, or just root 3. Okay, very good. So we've kind of summarized this already, but we'll just review, make sure you guys got it. Chris, what size do we have to divide for a sine ratio? Opposite over. Okay, so if this is my reference angle, y over 1. So we just are left with y. Okay, cosine. x over 1. So we're just left with x. And tangent? y over x. Okay, good. Now I'm just going to push this one step further. What did y equal? What do you see here? What equals what? Sine. Sine. So tangent ratio can also equal sine theta over what's your x? Cosine. <laughs> That's just pushing it one step further, okay? That's just for the special triangles, right? Pardon? That's just for the special triangles. Um or is that for in general? That's in general. Yeah. So Booker asks, are these ratios just for the 30, the 45, and the 60 triangles? No. That can be for anything because as long as you have a right angle triangle, you'll have an opposite, you'll have an adjacent, and you'll have a hypotenuse. Would it have now, to have hypotenuse 1? The hypotenuse has to be 1 yeah. in order for it to just be y, just to be x, and just to be okay, If you didn't have a hypotenuse of 1, uh, yeah, it could still be your sine over cosine, but um, you would maybe just have y over r over x over r if, oh, your, yeah. if your hypotenuse wasn't one. Yeah. Okay. All right, now for the fun. So did you guys like the special triangles? Yeah. Yeah, they were fun? <laughs> so what we're doing now, I know you guys are excited, see each other for the weekend. <laughs> Could you guys listen, please? Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take those three special triangles and we're going to put them into quadrant one. And we're going to see what they look like. And then we're going to imagine them in quadrant two, in quadrant three, and in quadrant four. And that will give us this, the unit circle. Okay, let's start with this triangle here. So I'll just highlight them so you know which one I'm talking about. How many degrees do you think that would be? 30, yeah, it's the smallest. Okay, if we're talking about special triangles, it's the smallest one of the three. Oh, and it's labeled. <laughs> so the answer is already there for you. Okay, now, what is the measurement between 30 degrees and 90 degrees? We know it's a denominator of 2. Root 3 over 2, good. Okay, that's the length from here to here, and it's showing that length down here. So I'm just going to label root 3 over 2. Okay. That is the longest x length of the three special triangles. Okay, so going the furthest. Okay, and what is the height? One half. Hello. Good, one half. Hi. Thank you very much. Okay, and the height 
on 30 degrees for our y value will be a half. So we have the x coordinate and we have the y coordinate. That's giving us now an ordered pair. Okay, to get to this point, we had to go over root 3 over 2. That's our x coordinate. And to get up to this point, we had to go up 1 half. So the ordered pair after the rotation angle has terminated at 30 degrees will be root 3 over 2 and 1 over 2. Okay. So we took the x length and the y length and that created our ordered pair. So is it kind of important that we memorize these lengths? Yeah. A little bit, hey? Okay, let's look at 45 degrees. Okay, this middle triangle. Hey, do you guys remember the bottom length? What was that? Root 2 over 2. Good. Okay, and the y length? Root 2 over 2. So in a 45, 45, 90, we have two lengths, our x and our y lengths that are exactly the same. Okay, because those two angles are the same. So we have root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. So our point will be root 2 over 2. And then lastly, we have the triangle for 60 degrees. Okay, it's the tallest <coughs> of the three. Okay, our, and it's the smallest uh, on the x axis. Okay, so it's going from 0 to a half. So my x coordinate is a half. And the height of this will be root 3 over 2. So that means the y coordinate will be root 3 over 2. So you're probably wondering, like, why are we doing this? Why does it matter? Well, if you can remember these special triangles, and say I wanted sine 60 degrees, the exact value of sine 60 degrees. What was sine again? Y, X? It was Y. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what was the Y coordinate of sine 60. And it's root 3 over 2. So as an exact value, I've solved it. Okay, whereas if I put sine 60 into my calculator, I'd get a bunch of decimals that aren't exact. Okay, so you have to memorize the special triangles. Okay, so we've applied them into <coughs> one quadrant. Let's just look at a few more ordered pairs. Okay, what's the radius on a unit circle? 1. So if I were at 0 degrees, I'd be going from the vertex to this point, and the radius would be 1. Okay, am I moving along the x-axis or the y-axis? X. x. So my x value will be 1. Have I gone up or down? No, so it's y will be 0. Okay, so that's the ordered pair 1, 0. What would the ordered pair at 90 degrees or pi over 2 be? 0, 1. Excellent. Okay, and then if I went over here, at 180 degrees, or pi over 2, be at negative 1, 0. And then if I was down below, where would I be? 0, negative 1. Okay, and that's at 270 degrees. That's on the next page. We'll get to that. I thought 180 was pi. Pardon? I thought 180 was pi. Yes. Thank you. And then this would be 3 pi over 2. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, so we've written all the lengths for the special triangles on here. And I just want to point out again, so on the x-axis, we have 1, 2, 3, okay? Um, or if you're starting with the 30 degrees, it would be 3, 2, 1, okay? Again, if you're starting with the 30 degrees, you'd go 1, 2, 3. So there's a bit of a pattern on how the heights are increasing and decreasing. Okay. Um, part B, how do the coordinates of the points relate to the measure on the rotation angle? Well, we looked at this in the last question. But basically, for all the x coordinates, that's going to be our cosine ratio. And for all the y coordinates, that's our sine ratio.
So we have another chart. Um, I'm going to skip part of it because we've already done part of it. We filled out sine, cosine, and tangent for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees already. So now let's just do the 0 degrees and the 90 degrees. Okay, so for sine 0, just keep in mind that's the point 1, 0. Okay, what will be the the value of sine again? Is it x or y? It's y. So what's the y value of this zero degrees right here? Okay, well we're, we have the ordered pair one zero at zero degrees and the y coordinate is zero. So in this case, yes, we could put it in our calculator. We could go sine zero and we would get zero. Okay, cosine of zero degrees, that's going to be the x coordinate for zero degrees. The x coordinate is one. And just recall that tan is y over x. So we get zero over one. So that's equal to zero. Okay, let's do 90 degrees. That's going to be the point zero, 0,1. So what would sine 90 be? 1. What's cosine 90? The x coordinate 0. Okay, and then tangent 90 will be y over x. So we have 1 divided by 0. Is that possible? No. No, so this will be undefined. And um, maybe I will just get you guys quickly. You can use the chart up above. It shouldn't take too long. But let's just say I'm looking at the 30 degree triangle. Okay, so my ordered pair is root 3 over 2 and 1 over 2 for 30 degrees. If I asked you what sine 30 was, just looking at this diagram, what would it be? What is sine again? So the y. What's the y coordinate? One half. One half. Good. Okay. If I asked you for cos 30. 30 Because it's the x one. So square root of 3 over 2. Good. Okay. And then tangent would be y over x. We have 1 over 2 over root 3 over 2. So that leaves me with 1 over root 3. If you rationalize, you get root 3 over 3. What's up? Nothing. I think you guys, it, it's not going to hurt for us to look at this a little bit more. So I'm going to take my time. For 45 degrees, we have the ordered pair root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. That comes from my x value root 2 over 2 and my y value root 2 over 2. Okay, so we have our x and our y coordinate right here for 45 degrees. Sine represents the y coordinate. The y coordinate for 45 <coughs> degrees is root 2 over 2. Cosine represents the x coordinate. And the x coordinate for 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. And tangent is sine over cosine. Okay, root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, 1. I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds. I want you to complete 60 degrees. Okay, by looking at this triangle above in this ordered pair. Here, you did it? Yeah. Try to do it without looking at the previous table on the page before. Okay, use the special triangles. So Hannah, we 
we have 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 30 degrees. Okay, this would be my set of axes. Okay, what's your hypotenuse? One. What's this like? Um, uh, one. Uh, wait, hold on. Yeah, sorry, root two over two. Perfect. So your y value is root three over two. What's your x value? A half. Half, perfect. So what's the ordered pair on the end of this terminal arm? One half. Okay. Jane, what is sine 60 degrees? Perfect. Okay, um, Bernie, what's your cosine root of 60 degrees? Okay, half. And let's go with Xander. What would, how would we figure out tan? What would you have to divide? Yeah, and then what happens to the twos? Cancel out, so we have root 3 over 1, so we're just left with root 3. Okay, good job. So looking just at the sine ratios, as we go from 0 degrees up to 90 degrees, where are the values falling, falling, um, increasing from? 0 to 1. Very good. I'll use difficult. Okay, so sine increases from 0 to 1. And then we look at cosine from angle 0 degrees to 90 degrees, and it's going from 1 to 0. And we've already summarized this, but I'll just summarize it one more time. The tangent ratios are equal to the sine ratios divided by the cosine ratios. In other words, tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Okay, and that's something on your formula sheet. You don't have to memorize that. But if you got it quick, then that's much better. So all of that prep work leads us to the unit circle. And it might look crazy and complicated, but it's not. So let's just take a look at this triangle first. It has a reference angle of 30 degrees. Okay, and our ordered pair because our x value was root 3 over 2, and our y value was 1 over 2, became root 3 over 2 and 1 over 2. Now let's take that same 30 degree triangle, and let's apply it in quadrant 2. What happened to the ordered pair? Okay, the only difference is the x is now negative. Okay, so same reference angle. Okay, the ordered pairs, one of them just, one of the coordinates just changed sides. Okay, what about if I applied 30 degrees, okay, into the third quadrant? What happens to the ordered pair? Negative, negative. Same values, x and y didn't change, but the signs did. Okay, now let's apply it in quadrant four. Okay, checking out our ordered pairs here. We still have root 3 over 2, we still have 1 over 2, but y is going down, x is positive. So we haven't really added much. We've just taken the special triangle 30 degrees, special triangle 45, special triangle 60, and we've applied it in all four quadrants. Okay, but the ordered pairs are the same, but different. Those of you who have been to Thailand, same, same, but different. No? Who's been to Thailand? Actually, I've actually been there, but I have no idea. Really? They always say, like, same, same, but different. Yeah. You gotta go back. You gotta go back. You didn't live. It's worth it anyways. I lived in Vietnam. Come on, man. Where's the person? Yeah. The is in the black of the um, it actually does apply, like, sine, cosine, tangent, they'll still be positive in the same uh, quadrants as before. Okay, so 
Just a heads up, not tomorrow, but on Wednesday, you guys are going to have a blank unit circle. And you're going to have a test on how to make that unit circle. And you're also going to have a blank special triangle sheet. So pretty much the sheet I gave you guys, you're going to have to complete that as a quiz. Okay, so I've told you what the quiz is already. Is now this? I've seen some long faces, some, oh my goodness, faces. When is this? But let's just talk about some of the patterns. So first of all, we have a special triangle, 30, 45, 60. You listen? Thanks. Okay, we have a special triangle, 30, 45, 60. Special triangle, 30, 45, 60. Special triangle, 30, 45, 60. Okay, that happens in all four quadrants. Let's just ignore these 45s for a second. Okay, anything that's a special triangle of 45 degrees. I'm going to cross those out. And we're going to go through how do we come up with the radians. Okay, so we'll just ignore the ordered pairs for a second. Let's start at zero radians. 30 degrees is 1 pi over 6. Okay, we skipped the 45. Now we have, if you guys want to write this down, 2 pi over 6. Okay, what does that reduce to? 1 over 3, right? Okay, and then we have 3 pi over 6, which reduces to pi over 2. Then we have 4 pi over 6. Skip the 45. 5 pi over 6. Then we have 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, what's next? 10 pi over 6, and lastly, or not lastly, 11 pi over 6, it's already written there for us. Okay, and then lastly, a full circle would be 12 pi over 6, which reduces to 2 pi. Okay, so if you're ever trying to figure out the radians, you just start with 1 over 6, 2 over 6, 3 over 6, 4 over 6, 5 over 6, 6 over 6, 7 over 6, 8 over 6, 9 over 6, 10 over 6, 11 over 6, 12 over 6. Five. Okay, now what if we're talking about the 45s? Okay, does anyone see a pattern? Start with 1 pi over 4, then go to 45 degrees later, uh, two. 2 pi over 4, which is half a pi, right? Okay, let's go 45 degrees more. Okay, now we're at 3 pi over 4, it's already written for us. Okay, go another pi, we're at 4 pi over 4, which reduces to pi. Go another 45, we're at 5 pi over 4. Okay, go another pi, or another 45 degrees, we're at 6 pi over 4, which reduces to 3 over 2 pi. Okay, and then 7 pi over 4, and lastly, 45 degrees later, 8 pi over 4, which is 2 pi. Okay, so if you want to go quickly on how to get the radians, you can do it that way. Or if I know this is 30 degrees, how do I go from 30 degrees into radians? What do I multiply by? Pi over 180. So then I'd go 30 divided by 180. That gives me 1 6 of a pi. Okay, so if you forget that little trick on how to go around, you can always just take the degree and then do the conversion. Okay? It's not necessary to memorize how many pi's go around. So there's another trick on how to draw this. Let's just look at the x-coordinates of the points first. Okay, we have 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3. 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3. Okay, now the y-coordinates. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. One, two, three, three, two, one. You guys got it. Okay, it might take some practice. Uh, what I'd recommend you do is there is a blank um, or a partially filled out unit circle in your homework. And then obviously there's a blank one in front of you too. 
just practice constructing it. Okay. Um, I don't think we're going to have time to get into how we're going to use the unit circle today, but it is important. Um, so maybe just for the last few minutes, if you guys want, try on your own. See if you can create the unit circle. <laughs> Remember, it's only three special triangles, and you 